Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Real Talk. I pray you're doing well as we thank the Most High for so much. Um, this is actually a video response back to you, Mama T. Um, you see, my title says The Mother of the Church. <laughs> well, I tell you, you about to start up a huge fight with this one here. Uh, but you want to just know my, uh, my little take on this um, about all the churches that have... They, you know, they mother of the church. And what do I think about that? Um, one thing I always say, sis, um, and powerful email, by the way, everything that you see, um, that you have these questions about, you should always ask yourself, what's biblical and what's not? What's tradition to men? What's tradition? What's religion? You know, tradition versus what the words say. Um, now I know this been going on for years, um, the mother of the church. And in a lot of churches, that causes a lot of problems. And I'll tell you why. Um, because you have a lot of pastors. I'm not saying all. But you have a lot of pastors that make the big mistake by showing favoritism. Because she's the oldest. She's the mother. She's been tied longer than anybody else. She puts in a lot of tides. And a lot of times with that tithing, um, they allow the mothers of the church to kind of take over in so many ways. I'm not saying everybody. So it's really it's really traditional uh, when you when you think about it. It's just, it's just tradition that's been going on. Um, just like the, the hats. Uh, you asked me about calling the uh, preacher's wives first ladies. A lot of preacher wives don't like to be called first lady. Because really, a lot of them are not they first lady in the first place. Some of them on second, third, fourth, fifth wife, just to be honest. You know, so a lot of these sayings, a lot of these things that you see is just, it's just what you see been going on for years with tradition. Is it biblical? No. You're not going to read in the Bible where they was placing mothers of the church, you know, because sister such and such been going there for years. And she's the mother. I, I've been, I've seen this for years, man, with my own eyes, how, how they play that favoritism, man. And so many churches get destroyed behind that. You already have cliques in the church that, that these certain group of people that always hang with each other, you know, and pretty much talk about everybody else. So when you start putting those labels like that, I and mean, you in the pulpit, I always calling out the mother of the church because she's, you know, the mother of the church that you done named her. She always putting in heavy tides. You know, some people don't see nothing wrong with it. Uh, some people do. And then some just don't care, you know. But one thing I've learned from experience being in churches, uh, one thing you should never do is show favoritism. You should never do that. You should never be a, try to be a people's pleaser because you're not going to please everybody in the first place. And that's showing that favoritism on certain people is why so many other people have a problem with the pulpit on down. The Bible say do all things in decent and order, you know, and that's hard to get in a lot of these, especially Baptist churches. It's hard to get order when you got so many people in one building who want power or their ego, you know, or they want their name called down. You know, some people tired just so they can, some people stand up, some people come to church late just to, you know, Make a make a, a, a interest, you know, a scene, you know. It, you gotta understand, there's people out here like that, but not everybody, you know. So when you ask me this question, what is my take on it? Uh, I wouldn't do it if I was pastoring somebody's man. I I wouldn't do it, brother. Uh, I mean, my sister. I I wouldn't. I would care less about all these titles. Uh, that's the problem, man. They, they they make up titles nowadays. You just really look at it, man. You know, just just give her a name. That's the mother of the church, you know. Get. I mean, what when you talk about the church, I don't remember her being where Christ was at when Christ said, upon this rock, I should be in my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He didn't say, upon this rock, I mean, upon the mother, I'm going to build this church. He didn't say that. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. He said, my church, not churches. Catch that. So a lot of people... A lot of people actually try to base their church off the mother, you know. The problem is, when you start putting more emphasis on people than who is the, who, 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 who is the one that's in charge? <laughs> who, 
who is the chief cornerstone. You know, people if people would learn to just uh, stay in their lane, you would cut out a lot of confusion. You know, because I guarantee you, so it's another older woman that's that's hating on the one. That's the mother of the church because she ain't nothing but a couple of months or maybe a year or two older than her. And she getting all the, you know, all the attention. So when you start start talking about the mother of the church and all giving her all them accolades and all this stuff, it's going to cause somebody else that's not too old, that, that maybe even the same age or older, you know. I, I, I'm just talking about what I've seen. You you may not have seen this, but I have seen this all my life, man. It, it, it comes, it, it causes a lot of trouble. You know, when you start giving everybody a title, you know, and you recognize this person here, but you don't recognize the one that's doing all the other hard work, you know, and, and, and a lot of preachers, they'll do it, man. They'll stand in their pulpit, mother, you show sure look good this Sunday. Mother, we show sure appreciate you, mother. That's our mother of the church. Now, I, I'm saying, I understand you, you recognize the people. I don't have no problem with that. My problem is, once again, the favoritism. You know, you recognizing the mother of the church all the time, but this the mom, the mother, mother done got old, and mother not even doing nothing but just coming to church wearing her hat, looking good. You know, but then you're not recognizing the one back there cleaning the kitchen, cooking. You know, going outside the four walls, doing all she can out there. You recognize the mother of the church, but you don't never recognize the one who's out there and really out there and moving around, getting it. You know, trying to make the church grow. And that, that's just what I've been seeing for years, man. So, to me, is is you shouldn't put these titles on people. But hey, who am I to say you know? Because people are gonna do it anyway. This just this just my little two cents. You want to know? I wouldn't do it. But that's the reason why I'm not in the church building because I've learned. I'm talking about far as um, I'm not over nobody pastoring because I wouldn't. I would cut out all this stuff. And I probably would have maybe three members because I'm not I'm not crazy about none of this stuff. You you can miss me with all the wearing the hats. This this stuff just traditional, man. You know, you got women's hats Sunday. You, I mean, you you got it, you, it, everything got a day now. Children's day, you know, men's day, you know, women's day, youth day. But when you talk about the Lord's day, don't nobody even know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the real Lord's Day, the, the most times they ain't talking about going to your building every Sunday. Somebody will catch that later on. See, we putting all this emphasis on all this other stuff, the, the the activities and everything in the church, the building. But how many people sitting up in the building and really know what time it is and what we living in and what's, what's really out here in this spiritual realm? Instead of always talking about the building fund and the bake sale and the car washes, you know, in the next revival that's coming, you got to understand, man, we are living in some trying times that's getting worse and worse by the hour, it look like. So that's my little two cents. I wanted to throw that in there. With that being said, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Shalom.